The engine is fairly well detailed, but the chassis is extremely basic. So I just combined the two videos here. Also on that note, the chassis on this, it is wrong. It is still based on the 911 chassis. The only difference is the rear has a traditional double wishbone style independent rear suspension. Tamiya felt it necessary just to give us a flat plate. That being said, there is essentially zero detail on this chassis. Anywho, with that rant being over, let's get on to putting this engine together. It will go together just like any other engine. It's two separate block halves just glued together. Now do pay attention to the valve covers because they are left and right handed. This one in particular, it's got these two mounting holes on it. So when you go to mount these, as long as you could see the work Porsche in a proper orientation so you could read it, you're going to be just fine. Or is it Porsche? How do you guys pronounce this? Off camera, I painted the entire assembly from here in a flat aluminium. Then looking at the reference photos, this fan shroud, that's right, this is air cooled, so this is the fan shroud. Is it supposed to be this reddish orangish color? The only color I had on hand that was somewhat of a decent match, believe it or not, was Chevy engine orange. It is just a tad bit brighter than what it is supposed to be, but it is close enough for me. And once it's all assembled, you're barely even going to see it. The tape here is getting snagged on the oil filter, which reminds me, I never painted the oil filter. Oops. From there, it is just a little bit of hand painting. And while I had some gold on the paintbrush here, I figured I might as well paint the U-joint parts of the CV shafts. And again, since I had paint on the brush, I painted everything else that was supposed to be black, like the belt and the axles on the front diff. The instructions say that the transmission should be painted a flat black. That is not right. This thing is actually made out of magnesium, so painted magnesium. And with the majority of the painting done, we could finally start putting this thing together. And normally, I would install this beforehand, and I would blend in those cam covers to get rid of that seam. But I thought that being that I still had to do some painting on the fan shroud, and this whole assembly will be hidden, I just, I didn't do it. Now when you guys put in the main drive belt and pulleys, it is supposed to sit crooked, so do not be alarmed. And with the intake manifold installed, we need to make this thing a little less toy-like. 
So I'm just going to go over it all with a very heavy coat of some Tamiya panel line accent. That's going to give us some shadows and added sense of depth that just makes it look a little bit more realistic. And again, you could completely skip this step because once this thing is installed, you will barely see any of it. I'm really only doing this just for you guys. And do take note, I have drilled out the cam covers for spark plug wires. Yeah, we're going to wire this thing up. But first, we need to assemble the suspension around it. These two little bitty tabs right here, you got to kind of twist and hook this thing around the axles, then it will pop into place. It's actually really easy to do, but just doing it to a viewfinder when you have no sense of depth perception, it, it's kind of tricky. And once that guy's finally in place, the subframe will just pop in right over it. The only advice I could give you here is make sure that that cross member right there is fully seated. Otherwise, these spindles will not fit into place and nothing will be aligned going forward. It's really a good thing I use a slow setting glue because I had to go back and tear it all apart. Oh yeah, also make sure that notches are facing towards the rear of the engine assembly. Now these two holes right here on the spindle, those line up with the mounting tabs on this shock assembly here. This is another one of those things that is extremely easy to do. I just struggle with it because I'm working through a viewfinder. So bear with me here. And once that's together, we can start wiring up our distributor here. But, ooh, what is this? Chauncey's offspring has come to haunt me. Should I be killing these things? I, I don't know. I just... They're little. I don't want to hurt them, but they're spiders. I don't want them to bite me or my dog or I guess my wife. Anywho, we could just strip off some of the sheeting with our fingernails there and then trim it a little bit shorter because I did not drill the holes that deep. I should also mention, I think this distributor is a carryover from one of the flat four engines. There are only five sockets there. It is one per cylinder plus a coil. So I'm only going to wire up five of these cylinders. That is okay because everything over here is hidden. All you will see is a three wires going over that fan shroud there. So do not laugh at me. <laughs> I'm doing this kind of janky. I got some more trimming to do, it seems. So I'm going to jump ahead here because you've all seen me wire distributors before. It's no different. Now the good thing about this being an actual wire, when you bend it, it will hold its shape. So when gravity comes into play, you can make it look all kinds of realistic if you need to. And again, 
the only thing you'll see here are these three wires going over the fan shroud. So do your best to make those look presentable because everything else will be hidden. This is why making sure your valve covers are on the right side matters. Those of you that know me know that I'm an ex-diesel tech. And I would still rather take a bath and use diesel oil than work on a Porsche. Could you imagine having to pull the engine and this cross member just to put a new balancer on this thing? Under this tape here, I painted those seals in body color when I painted the body earlier because this whole piece gets painted in flat black. But first, we got to cut this little guy off. Do not lose him though, because we will need him much, much later. Well, if you're following my video, only about five minutes from now. Once we get that area cleaned up, you can see I've already got this thing primed. That is because when I start laying on the paint, I am not going to want this casting flaw thing right here to etch and show through the paint. Before we get to that, however, I was not paying attention. This whole assembly right here needs to also be painted body color. Keep in mind, the instructions do not say that. This is strictly from looking at reference photos. At least I don't think the instructions say that. You guys know how I am when it comes to instructions. With that painted though, I masked it up and then I painted the entire rest of the chassis in a semi-gloss black. I, uh, I didn't do a good job masking, it appears. The suspension, it's extremely straightforward. The shocks, they will only slot in one way, and then we get an upper and a lower control arm. From the way things were looking, the shocks go in first, and then they kind of just hook on to this upper control arm here. Having built this now, I'm thinking I could have installed this entire suspension assembly, then put in the shocks afterwards and saved myself a bit of a headache trying to line this up. Or, just leave the shocks out completely. Once you get a wheel on, you won't even see this area. Now, usually I like to install the steering linkage afterwards, but the way this all sits in here, we have to do it now. Which means we're going to have to fight with trying to align three separate pieces to put all this together. Alright, now, watch me struggle. What is it they say about hindsight? 20, 20, something like that. If I had to do this again, I would cut those little nubbins off the end of the axles. They just get in the way, and once everything is assembled and you try to turn the wheels, they just make the spindles bind and stick. It's all really hidden anyway, so if you guys are watching this, wanting to build your own, cut these little nubbin things on those axles off. Trust me. Watch it. I could turn it just a tiny tad bit, and then they start to bind. The wheels will still point straight though, so that is all that matters to me. Alrighty, it is finally time to put all these sub-assemblies together. Everything here is kind of a tight fit, but once we get the sway bar ends, on the outside there to where they're showing on the inside of the wheel well, 
everything will just kind of fall into place. Unless, of course, you wired your distributor, then you will have some hard time getting that upper left piece there to align. So just show it who's the bigger man, and it will eventually go into place. And again, this is one of those pieces that is extremely easy to fit unless you're working through a viewfinder. Maybe use some smaller tweezers too. Remember that little guy we cut off the chassis earlier? He essentially just goes right back to exactly where we cut him off from. And with this air intake assembly installed, we are done. And as you can see, all that wiring and the vast majority of the engine, it is extremely well hidden. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, stay tuned because we got the interior next.